Hey everyone, welcome to the Electric Supercar channel. If you've been following for a little bit, you'll know that we've been trying to do a new workflow. This workflow, the very first step is 3D scanning. That's what we're gonna do this week. We got lots of things on the Nissan to scan. Let's get to it. So I've been trying to incorporate 3D scanning more and more into my workflow. I really think that's the way to go for the future. So for the Nissan here, we've got a lot of things that I wanna scan so we can make some brackets and other things to get all the components on that we need to. All right, so last video, you probably remember, we got a lot of different things for the Nissan, motor, brake pedal, lots of different things, all the AEM components. Trying to follow my new workflow, one of the first things we need to do is scan everything so we can get good measurements, good data to make some good designs. As fate would have it, today's sponsor is 3D Maker Pro. We're gonna try out the Moose 3D Scanner. The people at 3D Maker Pro sent me the Moose to try. Some quick stats on the Moose. It's got a 0.03 millimeter accuracy with a 0.07 millimeter resolution. Okay. Scan ranges from 15 millimeters to 1,500 millimeters. Must be some sort of calibration thing. This is gonna be your turntable. Looks like there's probably just gonna be one speed. Plug it in there. So this will be a tripod, so you can set up your scanner. You want the scanner to be stationary. And this is what we're after. 3D Maker Pro also has their own software. It's called the JM Studio. I'll say it's very straightforward. Even somebody like me could use it. It's got all the things like optimizing your scan, splicing scans together. It has smart error correction. So the AI eliminates flawed or misaligned point cloud data while retaining accurate points. All right, so another nice thing, this program and this scanner do not require a supercomputer. So just my regular old laptop seems to work just fine. My plan is I'm gonna take something I've already scanned before, like my clay model uh, that I did for my car, and I'm gonna scan that again, just so I can kind of get a sense of the scanner, the software, things like that. Then we'll go ahead and go to the parts that we actually need to scan. So when the scan starts, you can see it starts scanning the car, which is awesome. It also has kind of a curve of all the points on the left side, and it'll tell you if things are too close or too far away. So you can adjust the scanner to get a good scan. Once you stop the scan, it will process the data automatically. You can try to auto align the parts. Sometimes this works and sometimes it doesn't. Now that we got the hang of it with the scale model car, we're gonna go on to our first piece. I think what we're gonna try is the gauge cluster. For the Nissan, the gauge cluster, it's got things like RPM, it's got the speedometer, it's got kind of the fuel level, oil pressure, oil temperature. None of those are gonna be working anymore and we're using an AEM dash. What we wanna do is we wanna scan that so we can make something that the AEM dash will connect to and still look like the OEM gauge cluster. All right, so 3D scanners, they work with light. So meaning it emits light and it's looking for the light coming back. That's how it kind of formulates the point clouds and figures out where things are in space. With that being said, it struggles with things that are clear or things that are very mirror-like because it's actually not getting that surface, it's getting the reflection or seeing through that surface. So for the gauge cluster, we actually need to coat it with something that the scanner can see. So we're gonna go ahead and give this a coat of scanning spray. When I say scanning spray, I really mean dry shampoo. We'll go ahead and see if we can start scanning. This is the scan that we were able to get of the instrument cluster. You can see it's very good. I'll give you a little sneak peek here. I'm able to design something that I think will work very well with the AEM dash. You can see how 3D scanning is a great part of the workflow. From there, we were able to create CAD designs that will nicely complement the components that we purchased. On the gauge cluster, again, we wanted to design something that looked kind of OEM, but I also wanted to give it just a little extra. This is what I designed. It actually works pretty well with the gauge cluster. All right, so this is kind of the OEM surround or shroud. That's kind of what it looks like. So again, it's got a really good fit. The 3D printed stuff that you can see though, I was thinking um, a really good thing or cool thing for the customer would be to have that, have a carbon fiber look. This is a piece I thought I'll need a little help on. So I put out the superhero signal. So for those of you who don't know, this is the symbol for Builder Creator. All right, today is the day. I am Jay Jarvie. He is another content creator on YouTube and he does car things and um, he is just amazing at what he does. I actually started following him um, before he had a thousand subscribers and uh, our channels kind of tended to grow kind of around the same rate. 
and uh, always interested in what he did. Uh, he, his was the first channel I ever binge watched. I just think it's so cool to reach out to creators like this and be able to collaborate. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna send you over to his channel. So please go subscribe to his channel. He's gonna create a video or some content showing how he makes this part. So some of the things we're gonna scan. So here's the Tesla brake booster. So we also need to figure out how and where that's gonna mount. Yes, yeah, so we're using the turntable. We got it set up. This is scanning the brake booster. So you can see it's capturing the data right there. All right, I just got done scanning. This is the Tesla brake booster, the iBooster. And here are the results of the scan. So again, I think it looks really good. And again, that's from this guy. We got the brake pedal, accelerator pedal. So we've scanned some things like the brake master cylinder, the brake pedal, and the accelerator pedal. So the brake master cylinder is gonna go on this side of the firewall, and on the other side is the brake pedal and accelerator pedal. So what we need is we need a good scan of this, as well as a good scan of the footwell here. The goal is to get good scan data so we can put it in CAD and then design some brackets that those things can mount to. So we need some good brackets for the accelerator pedal, brake pedal and brake master cylinder. All right, so we're starting to get the hang of scanning and all these things were easily accessible. We could just put them on a tabletop and scan with kind of all access. It's time to up the challenge. We're gonna actually start scanning some things in and on the car. All right, here we have the accelerator pedal as well as the brake pedal. We may or may not have already scanned these as you can tell with white powder. But the reason for that is when we go inside the footwell, we need to figure out where those currently are and we're gonna be replacing those with Tesla accelerator pedal and brake pedal. So we're gonna try the moose here in the footwell, try and get a good scan of the pedal location. So right here where it says out of sight, that's like where we need to figure out, there's kind of like a bell curve that if we've got things in the right, so that says too far, there we are. So that's kind of the range it wants. Okay, so this is what we got from the scan. That looks pretty good. Um, you can see like this is the side that's kind of, we'll call it more leather. This is the carpet. You've got your two pedals. So I think that looks pretty good. We can look at the scans in the JM Studio software and you can see we got pretty good resolution. From there, we're able to export it into CAD. That'll allow us to make some new brackets for the new pedals and get the exact placements that we want. Next is scanning the engine bay. On this side of the firewall, we need to put in the brake booster. So we need a good scan of the engine bay to make sure it can fit. And as you can see, we got a very good scan. We also have a Tesla motor that we have to figure out where that's gonna fit in the back. We're gonna scan the rear subframe here. Um, I believe that we're gonna have to make some modifications. Where the differential was, I don't think the motor's gonna fit. Need a scan to verify, and then if it doesn't fit, we will design something new. You can see from the scan that we we're able to export into CAD that we got some pretty good resolution. Here you can see the Tesla motor and that it will likely not fit in the subframe. So I got to do some modifications. That's why the 3D scanner is such a good step in my workflow. If you're like me and wanna improve your workflow, use 3D scanning. If you're interested in a product like this, I'll leave a link in the video description below. So as you can see, we've got a lot of things that we need to find places for. We need good accurate measurements, some CAD help, and let's see if we can make some parts. We were able to scan a lot, get a lot in CAD, and now we're starting to do the design. The next steps will be 3D printing, confirm that they fit, then use our partner SendCut Send to get some metal parts made, and then we're on our way to getting things put back together. So thanks for tuning in. See you next time. So I'm gonna pull out the bat signal. That's too far away. Come closer. Not fixtures. I guess they're fixtures. This week, 